Uh, thanks for staying with us. Along with Halloween comes bonfires, sparklers and fireworks. So this morning we're looking at what you should do should someone in your party suffer a burn. GP Dr. Brian Higgins has joined us. You hot-footed all the way from Gallia this morning. I Good morning. did. Wow. Good morning, guys. Um, Good morning. As a GP, do you see an uptake this weekend and next week now in little burns and scratches and bumps and cuts and bruises? Yeah, so across all the healthcare sector and fire safety and guards, there's just a huge amount of colleagues at Halloween for fire-related injuries, unfortunately. And is it just a case of common sense? Like obviously, we're not here to discuss the safety issue, it's more what happens if you do suffer an injury. Mm -hmm. But just use the head, isn't it? It's use the head a little bit, but there's sometimes where people can get caught out, and it's not so much common sense, it's where people think they're safe and they're yeah, not. true. And that's just a little bit about fire prevention. How can you do that? Because obviously last night I was putting the dog in, the dogs get very scared, animals get very scared mm. over this particular period, but when you're, you know, releasing fireworks or you're meddling with them, how do you prevent and, and be safe? Well, see, the thing is, fireworks land are illegal, and they're illegal mm. for... A reason, a really common injury that would be seen in the hospital, and I was speaking to a plastic surgeon in Cork yesterday. Actually, who just um, just about these sort of injuries is unexploding fireworks are so oh, dangerous right, because people yeah. just say, "Oh, then go off," they grab it and then, and then bang, and you know they will lose some fingers, and that's like, incredibly common. But um, in terms of that, then Brian, if somebody does suffer, if they pick up uh, a firework and it does go off in the hand, and we've got a burnt hand. What's what the first thing we need to do? Okay, so when it comes to burns, fireworks, anything affecting the hands, just go straight to the hospital. Um, unless it's a very light burn, something like a sun, that almost looks like sunburn, if there's any blistering uh, and it affects the hands, straight to the hospital. Before you do that, call the ambulance, or if, if you're close, drive yourself. The first thing you need to do, though, is remove the source of heat. So when that's burned, the skin is still very hot, so there's more damage being done. So you need to cool it. Get the hand under a tap or a hose, and run it for at least 15 minutes. Because what you want to do is prevent any further injury. And that's the most important thing anybody can do. Because it will, it will continue to burn, is that what yeah, you're because when you Yeah, when you feel a burn, it's hot. Mm -hmm. And as it's hot, it's doing more damage. So you need to cool it. It's the number one thing people can do. And it helps the outcomes the most. So tap for at least 15 minutes. Um, and then if you can, if it's dirty, wash it with a little bit of soap and water. And then you can wrap it. And cling film by far and away is the best thing to wrap yeah. it. What, what about if someone is wearing a costume, you know, because that's obviously the thing where people will be wearing rubber gloves or they'll be wearing a mask or something of that ilk. What happens then? That's a very different situation. Okay, so with costumes, um, any costumes, like for anybody, especially children, make sure they're fire retardant. Any synthetic material, almost every synthetic material is flammable. Things that are extremely flammable are glue and any sort of plastic, plastic bag, um, they, they just light up. Yeah. Um, Again, what you need to do is remove the source of the heat. You want to limit the damage from the burn. So whatever, whatever the clothing is, take it straight off. You remove it straight away? Yeah, straight away. And what, okay. what if you were, if, if, say if it was an arm and you're removing it, you see it's on, would it be stuck to the skin or would it, see it might be removing the skin? It depends. But that would frighten the life out of me, I'd say leave it. It depends. Cool it, cool it, cool it. Um, again, we were speaking about, this is, this is why I ran this, rang the surgeon yesterday, and the advice yeah. was, just remove it. Um, sometimes if it's very melted into the skin, I believe you, you, you shouldn't. Again, I need to clarify yeah, that. Yeah. But for the vast majority of situations, and if you're in any doubt, just remove it and get water off the burn. What about any um, paracetamol or anything like that to take with it? I mean, is that a no-go? Oh, just no-go. Yeah, it's they're they're burn severe chronic pain. They're incredibly pain. Uh, it's an incredi incredibly painful, mm -hmm. so get pain on your thin quickly. Going back to something you said earlier on about rapid and cling film, mm -hmm. My temptation would be, uh, not so much, in fact, I had a bad burn a couple of weeks ago, didn't put on it, but I would be tempted to, there's sprays, there's creams, yeah. and then wrap it. Mm. Or do you just wrap it as it is, or would you put some burnies on it or some sort of ointment? So it depends on the burn, mm. okay? For a light burn, if it's just like, if it's just like sunburn, redness, shiny the skin, quite painful, um, but no blistering. Um, what you can do, the creams are fine then, any moisturizers, what really hurts the burn is the movement of air over the skin. So what you'll find is those creams act like a barrier. So like right, petroleum Texas, jelly, yeah. all those things, they just act like a barrier moisturizer. So they keep that vapor off the off the burn. Okay. So that'll, that'll remove the pain. So for any of those light burns, just cream on them, cool them first off, 
whatever the burn is, cool it straight away, and you can book cream on the back burns. What if we were to get not necessarily a burn, but like a spark, if something flew back, or there was a kind of a, a reflection? What, how would that happen? How would you do with that? Just little dots of sparks. Again, small, uh, they, small little sparks, they don't have a lot of energy, so they, they're te they, they won't cause much of a burn in quicker, general. Yeah, yeah. Um, the issue there is with those um, like synthetic costumes, thing, yeah. they can just light up. And the other thing people have to be so incredibly careful with, with sparks, is around petrol. What you need to remember about petrol is it's not the petrol that catches on fire, it's, it's the, the vapour. Yeah, yeah. So anytime petrol is being used, the air around it is effectively flammable. So even if somebody's holding a lighter and they drop it and it sparks, or even something as small like a, a candle in a pumpkin, um, can set off that petrol vapor. Or smoking or anything like that. It's just about having a little bit of smarts, isn't it? Just Absolutely. being careful in terms of the costumes, in terms of, your, in terms of the pumpkins that you have lit, where they're positioned. But that cling film tip now is one that I'll take with me. That's yeah. The I, best I, thing to wrap it in is cling film. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know what it's clean. Just throw away the first bit, the yeah. first bit, because that's, uh, but the rest of it will be fairly sterile. So just wrap it up. Okay, I was just going to say I got lots of rashes from all the uh, makeup, but of course we're going to talk about that another day. <laughs>